Why is it that most people don't like libertarians? I mean, the entire stated purpose of their political movement is to maximize liberty. And most people are actually pretty pro-liberty, and yet they still dislike libertarians. So why is this the case? You know, I was trying to find an answer to this myself. And I came to the conclusion that most people who call themselves libertarians simply are not libertarians. Anybody who calls themselves a libertarian, uh, it's useful to think of them as existing in two separate groups, uh, one of which is true libertarianism and the other of which uh, is, is not. And I've called them uh, weak and strong libertarian, or weak and strong libertarianism, the opposite way around. So a weak libertarian would be someone who defends and only cares about defending the liberty of themselves. And they would never stick their neck out to defend the liberty of somebody else. Whereas conversely, a strong libertarian would defend the liberty of somebody else just as strongly as they would defend their own liberty. Um, perhaps even more strongly because uh, if they're a capable person who's, you know, they, they can defend their own selves, then they maybe need to focus even more strongly on defending the liberty of somebody who can't defend it for themselves, right? Um, and I, I think this strong libertarianism, what I'm, what I'm calling strong libertarianism, was actually how the political ideology was first was first conceived, uh, and I have two quotes to kind of um, to kind of support that. Uh, the first one being from the U.S. Libertarian Party from their website lp.org. Uh, it reads, "We defend each person's right to engage in any activity that is peaceful and honest." So you know this idea of defending anybody's right, defending every person's right, is uh, strong. Uh, and the second one is from John Stuart Mill's On Liberty which is kind of like one of the most important founding documents of, of this idea of uh, libertarianism. So it reads, The sole end for which mankind are warranted, individually or collectively, in interfering with the liberty of action of any of their number is self-protection. Uh, so it sounds like he's talking about the individual, but it continues, that the only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. So again, this strong idea of defending the rights of others, right? Uh, I think, you know, what libertarianism has become is mostly this second type, and that's why it's it tends to be pretty disliked because it's it just comes off as like selfish and you know not not really a, a good action. It's uh, a good political ideology. It's just really an excuse to not have to do anything. Um, these people are just looking for a way to make themselves morally exempt from having to right wrongs that they perceive in society. If they see somebody else's liberty being trampled upon, uh, they just, they want to have a get out of jail free card to say, hey, that's wrong, but I'm a libertarian, so I, I think everybody should just, you know, fend for themselves. And um, that's where you get this dislike of these libertarians, because um, they're not, they're not really, they're not true Scotsmen. Um, um, and examples of, you know, types of people that you'd find being this weak kind. Uh, first of all is uh, extreme selfish types. Um, this is an ideology I've heard bandied about. And it's basically this idea that if everybody focuses only on their own good, then, you know, that's the best possible society. And everybody, you know, that would maximize happiness is if everyone just focused on themselves. And a subset of this would be Ayn Rand types who... You know, she had this idea of extreme selfishness being a good thing, and um, uh, it's, it's really just kind of pathetic. Uh, again, another type of maybe frat guys, you know, live for the moment types. Um, they could probably fit into this weak libertarian type. Just anybody who would use as a crutch uh, this, you know, supposed philosophy just because it says that I don't have to help anybody else who, you know, I see is in danger. And, I, and I'm morally justified in doing so, in... in, in my inaction i'm morally justified right it's basically an excuse um lastly off i think maybe most pertinently is uh a weak libertarian could be somebody who is economically well off and they want to even though they have the means very very clearly maybe even abundantly so to defend the liberty of others they want to be morally justified in their inaction in their not doing anything to help them um and a subset of these people would be maybe like Silicon Valley types. I think they really, you know, they really emphasize this point because they're, uh, 
uh, you know, they're into stoicism and they're allegedly into libertarianism, but it's just of this type. It's just that, you know, they've made usually a lot of money doing something, you know, <laughs> fairly stupid. Uh, and they need to justify not spending their, you know, relatively speaking, easily gotten gains um, on people who need it, on people who, you know, they see are suffering and in their mind they're suffering because they, they sort of like this idea of liberty. Um, they just need a way to not have to help them, essentially. So they, they bring out, they say, hey, I'm libertarian, you know, everybody should just fend for themselves, right? Now, types of arguments uh, that these weak libertarians would make are things like um, central banking is, is fine. In fact, it's good. You know, central banking where, with fiat currency, where people can essentially conjure money up out of nothing and then loan it out to people at interest, right? They would say that, well, it's a win-win situation. You know, the person getting the loan, they got the money they needed and the banks, they make interest on it. So, you know, they benefit and everybody was a willing participant. Therefore, you know, this is a good, you know, I'm a libertarian, right? And of course, if you know anything about banking, you know that they would just be ignoring the massive elephant in the room, which is, this is a, this is a really backhanded system by which people are making immense profit uh, for no work and slowly over the decades accumulating, you know, the vast majority of the wealth of a country. They're essentially stealing the wealth of a country. Um, and this is, you know, necessarily undermining the liberty of everybody in that country. They, though, don't hold liberty, these weak libertarians, they don't hold liberty as the highest virtue like a libertarian ought to. So they say, you know, everybody was a willing participant, man, it's okay. Uh, so they allow injustice like this to take place. Um, they might also, you know, I'll just say quickly, they might also object to people participating in unions. Uh, even if it's a, a union where, you know, your membership isn't mandatory and it's you know, completely up to the employee if they want to join. You know, th this is an issue where a libertarian should say, you know, it's, it's freedom of association. They should be able to do whatever they want as long as they weren't coerced into it. Um, but, you know, this and other sort of economic interests, uh, uh, you know, sides of economic uh, issues on which the weak libertarian will find himself sort of underlie this, their actual thinking, which is, you know, at the base of it, again, it's not that they're holding liberty as the highest virtue. They're kind of more like traditionally neoconservative or uh, just straight out capitalists. And the libertarianism only enters into, into their thinking because they want to have you know, that moral, that moral freedom to not help people who they think, who they perceive as suffering from injustices, right? So it's just that, that part of the libertarianism, it's not, they don't accept the whole thing, right? It's more capitalistic or neoconservative, right? Um, the ultimate irony of these weak libertarians is that uh, they necessarily have to condone, they have to be okay with actions which are anti-liberty, right? Like, like the banking example, uh, they could be aware that uh, central banking undermines the liberty of an entire country, ever undermines the liberty of every person in that country, and yet they would be okay with it because they would say, you know, the two willing participants thing, like they were both okay with it and they both benefited, therefore I can't interfere. But if a person holds liberty as their highest virtue, they really ought to interfere. So that's the irony on the weak libertarian side. The irony on the strong libertarian side is this, this, again, this idea that they ought to interfere and they ought to undermine sometimes the individual's liberty in order to maximize the liberty of the society, which ought to be their goal, you know, just, you know, it's really myopic and uh, counter counterproductive to promote the liberty of the one individual, even though you think that, you know, a hundred years from now, this could undermine everybody's liberty. And that idea as we know, it could be completely gone in that, in that time period. If your highest virtue is liberty, you should always defend it, even if it means, you know, sometimes doing the whole kill one to save a thousand thing. Uh, so again, we have this idea that strong libertarians ought to sometimes ironically interfere with the liberty of others. And this leads to two important questions. Um, one, what if the person that you're saying, you know, their liberty is being infringed, infringed upon, what if they don't want your help? What if they refuse your help? Well, you can go one of two ways as a strong libertarian here. Uh, one, you can say, 
okay, fine. And you, you know, let them do what they were going to do. But I think the problem with this is you essentially just become a weak libertarian again. You put the selfishness of that person and whoever they're, you know, engaging in that act with, you put their selfishness above the highest virtue of liberty, right? So you kind of just end up putting things before what ought to be your highest virtue. Therefore, I think that makes you a weak libertarian. Uh, secondly, if the person doesn't want help, what you can do is help them anyways, right? <laughs> and then you get this irony of, well, are you still a libertarian? Because you're just interfering when someone, uh, in an action that was between two willing participants, you're interfering uh, and undermining their liberty just because you think it's uh, going to harm the liberty of society uh, down the road, right? So that's the first irony of these strong libertarians. Uh, and the second question that, you know, interfering in an action like this brings up is, how do you know, how do you judge when someone's liberty is being harmed, right? And you can come up with a lot of fancy answers for this. You can say, like, committees and uh, certain laws and everything. But those all boil down to being decided by one person. So the, the thing at the root of what you dis, what, uh, how you decide if someone's liberty is being infringed upon is your own judgment. So you have this crazy situation where someone who started off as a libertarian uh, and wants to hold liberty as the highest virtue will necessarily sometimes have to interfere with other people's free actions. Uh, and they have to interfere just based on their own subjective judgment, right? It's crazy. So this, is, this brings me to this idea that libertarianism, it's really just like this stepping stone ideology where... Um, you're going to end up going down one of these two paths and you're going to become, you know, you're going to, you're going to start off saying you're libertarian and then you're going to have to necessarily, an action is going to come up and it's going to present you with a path whereby you can choose to become a weak libertarian or a strong libertarian. And if you are a weak libertarian, well then I don't think you're a libertarian because you don't hold liberty as your highest virtue. If you're a strong libertarian, you need to come to grips with this idea that you're going to have to interfere with the liberty of some people at some point uh, based on your own judgment and against their will. So this leads me to the conclusion, and let me know what you think of this, but the, this whole idea of libertarianism is just a, this stepping stone ideology. And when you bring both of these, these branching paths to their logical conclusion, well, the two logical end states of libertarianism are either cuckoldry or fascism.